Welcome to Live in the D, everyone. I'm Tati Amara here with the one and only Local 4 style editor, John Jordan. And we have a very special show for you today to help empower you and your style. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about all aspects of style, from clothes to hairstyles, skin care, and beyond. Plus, hear about the people who have actually made history in the world of fashion and the world in general. That's right. Now, John, before we get into your style advice, and you've, which you've given us a lot of over the years, mm -hmm. we're going to talk a little bit about you. Let's talk about your passion for fashion, right, and how you got into all of this. Okay. I am passionate about it, and I grew up, you know, with a beautiful, stylish mother. And so I, I definitely think that was the... Um, genesis of my interest in that, you know, world of style, which is a really big umbrella. Um, I ended up going to the University of Michigan to study art. And the thing about fashion or painting or sculpture or ceramics or weaving, it, it's all based on the same universal principles of art. So, it's it was a natural merging of interests for me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. You've always said this. You always say whether it's architecture, whether it's style design in the home, that it all is based in the principles of art. But now, during your time in the fashion world, you had a chance to work with some big time celebrities. Who are some of those superstars? Well, presidents and some royalty. Oh. Um, Sarah, the Duchess of York, uh, President Clinton, I've worked with him. Um, Broadway legend Elaine Stritch, you know, if you know who Elaine, uh, Jack's mother on 30 Rock. Oh, yes, definitely. Colleen, okay? Definitely. She was amazing. I think probably one of my favorites was Glenn Close. Ooh. Um, and speaking of close, I'm close to. Cindy Crawford, as you know, yes. you and I have both mm -hmm. interviewed her, and I've worked with Cindy several times, so I could go on and on and on, yeah. even though I'm really not a name dropper. No, no, we're pulling it out of you. <laughs> He's not a name dropper. We're pulling it out of you because, I mean, we also do have to mention that you also graduated from U of M, and you also are a licensed cosmetologist as mm -hmm. well. Went from the University of Michigan to beauty school. I love it. Which is challenging for pa parents to sort of process. I get that. It's it, like... U of M, Cosmo, it makes perfect sense to me, but I can see how parents might not understand all of that. But you brought your expertise to, D to DIV, to WDIV here in Detroit in the 80s. The 1980s. The 1980s. Not the, not the 1880s. Wait. Please clarify that. <laughs> the 1980s. But first, you were working behind the scenes. Tell us about that. Okay, so I, uh, because I did have a cosmetology license, mm -hmm. and I, it, makeup became really um, intuitive to me. So a couple of the fashion editors at actually both big Detroit uh, newspapers mm -hmm. kind of took a liking to me, and I did a lot of editorial work, uh, you know, styling, wardrobe, and hair, and makeup, and that led to commercial bookings, and so on and so forth. And then I actually was called uh, by the then vice president uh, and uh, news director at WDIV, Bob Warfield, my good friend Bob Warfield. He wanted to spruce up the uh, on-air talent and that's how I started in TV. And he's been sprucing us up ever since. <sighs> well, ever yeah. Since. <laughs> I, but, but I mean, I, you do such a great. I mean, I no, don't he's have... giving me a lot of advice. Uh, every time something new comes out, I'm going straight to John Jordan. Uh, I was trying on boots at a very fancy store with my mom. I told you about this story, and mm -hmm. she's like, "I wonder what John Jordan would think of these boots." And so you're kind of infused to all of our consciousness when it comes to style and fashion okay, so, and beauty. Well, so let me ask you that: Was that um, inspiration or fear? A that... little bit of both. <laughs> Okay, good. That's exactly the little, combo that I go for. A little bit of both. <laughs> so now you eventually went from behind the camera to in front of the camera to share your advice. Mm -hmm. So how did that happen? Okay, so another news director, <laughs> uh, Deborah Kalur, uh, she took me out to lunch. We were talking about, uh, you know, all kinds of things. And at the end of the lunch, she said, I want to put you in front of the camera. Mm. Um, it wasn't a question. <laughs> it was it, it was informing it, you. Yes, it was right. a declarative sentence. And I just thought, well, how hard can that be, you know? But that has been 
uh, and education in itself and led to tremendous opportunities. The the best of which is that I'm you know guest hosting with you, and I love it. I do. It's awesome. Now you've given me a lot of advice. You've given everyone here at WDIV a lot of advice. What's the most important message you want to send to people when it comes to style? So I think you I think you have to try things on. I think you I, I th you don't have to love your uh, effort, but you have to go there. You know, that, that's sort of like the art of editing, but you have to push yourself a little bit. And then the, the other thing, too, is that whether your sense of style is simple and uncomplicated or more involved, I think that the goal should be that you elevate your effort all the time. You just continue to elevate it. It doesn't have to be more money, it doesn't have to be more time, just how does it get Better. Better. I love that. I love that. Well, let's get into some of your style advice, John. How about starting with color? Okay, so we have a segment coming up here, and uh, it was all about getting peachy. That's right. Peach fuzz happens to be the Pantone color of the year for 2024. And Pantone is a color institute that, you know, decides what colors are going to be in style, and then all aspects of design get on board with that. Um, so you know, peach is something that, when it, when it comes to mind, I think people are very limited and yeah. they think about spring. But we looked at it in a way that made it relevant all year. Yeah, I love it. So let's take a look. Now is the perfect time to get peachy. Yep. Well, I wore some peach for you. Yeah, because yes. you can make it so much more interesting, okay? But, Traditionally, people think of pastels, you know, springtime, warmer weather. They put everything away in their closet that's pastel. Right now, you can be so much more creative because stylish people don't pay attention to calendars. Did you hear that? Stylish people don't pay attention no, to calendars. Because you've got a peach shirt on mm -hmm. with your suit, and it works for yeah. this time of year. And you have this vibrant version of peach, because you are a vibrant Thank version you. anyway. <laughs> A peach. There you go. All right, so let's get into it. So you have a couple of formulas that you've come up with for us to be able to incorporate this color into our wardrobe. So yes. what do you got for us? So, like, let's just take a look here at, you know, the peach spectrum. But look at all of these interesting shades that I've put with it. You, you, there's depth of color, okay? Mm -hmm. um, you, one might think, okay, neutrals, like, you know, gray, brown, black, Right, that's easy. But do plum, do olive, do burgundy. They, they they all make peach pop, especially when peach is pale. And it's just so much more interesting. That all way. right, that that makes a lot of sense. Now you have another formula which restricts mm -hmm. peach to its color family. What do you mean by this? Right. So take what you're wearing, for instance. Okay. This is what I would do. Okay, I love that with rust. Mm, that works. It's bright and like drab. And of course, the shoe. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Wine. Okay? okay? So you have a color family. This is known as monochromatic. All of these nice. colors have a red base to them. All right? But mixing them all up, bright, drab, pastel, that's what makes style stylish. There you go. We're learning here, people. Let's all take notes. And because Peach Fuzz is Pantone's color of the year, mm -hmm. we're going to see it everywhere, aren't we? Yes. So if we um, look over here to the side, you can see these housewares that I actually found. And so if you told me yesterday, because I did this yesterday afternoon right. in a hurry, uh, John, pick up some you know, housewares that are peach. Well, like, where would you even start to look for something? I like have no that? idea. But that's sort of the power of the Pantone color of the year. All of these manufacturers in all these different categories get on board with, you know, the color of the year. So you will be seeing it everywhere housewares, clothing, cosmetics. But, you know, the thing is be creative with your peach. So I love how you always push us to go out of our comfort zones when it comes to color, but can anyone pull off peach? I think so. I think it's the, it, first of all, you have to decide that you can pull it off, right. okay? Then you just have to be creative with how you combine it. All right.
right. More advice from John Jordan. We're just getting started. John has more ideas on tap and... Up next, hairstyles and history, okay? We're going to take a look at icons, including Bob Marley and how he's inspired generations. Welcome back to Live in the D, everyone. And we're still going strong with John Jordan. And up next, we're talking about hairstyles and history. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, hair icons aren't necessarily who you think they might be. Bob Marley, Angela Davis. Um, they've inspired, among other people, they've inspired the population you know, to do their hair a different way. And they're not necessarily, you know, in the world of fashion and beauty. That's very true. Now, John talked with Candace Davis Price and I about the decades of style influence black artists have had on society. Take a look. This is really fascinating to me because actually fashion history is history. Mm. That's right. This is true. That's right. And, and it really shapes generations and the way that people are perceived. It's everything. Mm -hmm. So let's start with your first icon. So Josephine Baker mm -hmm. was if not the biggest, you know, international entertainer, superstar. Mm -hmm. She was maybe the first superstar. And this is, we're talking about 1920. So this is an era when people, when women bob their hair, mm. cut it short. Josephine Baker, though, made her sort of, sl her slick, shiny hair, the signature was the finger wave. Yes. And the finger wave became popular again and again and again. Um, Missy Elliott, mm -hmm. Zendaya, um, Madonna, you know, it just continues to become Absolutely. popular. Mm -hmm. Does it doesn't go away. And Josephine Baker's trick, apparently, was she used egg whites to set her oh. finger waves and it made her hair extra shiny. That's innovative. Okay. Isn't that cool? Yeah, you had yes. to, you, you used what you had at that Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Well, and I did my, re well, think no about it. Gel. It's not, yeah, it's not <laughs> gel no with like alcohol yeah, in it, and, you know, protein. That's it. Well, you could go to the beauty supply store, you can get 20 different gels yep. that will do exactly what you need it to do. So she she did what she, so innovative. that's why the eggs, and now we've got these wave clips, which yep. are gonna do the trick. And <laughs> wave, <laughs> wave clips are what you use to, you know, put it in place, but a real pro will do it with a rat tail comb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you, you have a to real be... pro, John Jordan? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Depends so, on uh, what. But. Right. <laughs> So who's up next? Okay, uh, so um, up next we have Angela Davis. Mm. So Angela Davis was a big public figure. She was a communist professor who, like in 1970, was, you know, on trial, you know. Mm -hmm. She had this big, beautiful afro. It was not about Angela being a, a, a style icon. She was making a political statement, so she made... Afrocentric and natural hair, mm. the norm, mm -hmm. and it, you know it. It followed with you know groups like you know the Jackson Five, yes. and everybody yes. had an afro. People, the Brady men wanted <laughs> wanted an afro. There was that they, season they where afros. they all got perms. Everybody got perms, <laughs> and they true. used the pick yeah. to have the afro style. Yeah, yep. and it was all about embracing your natural hair too. Mm -hmm. it just well, and so speaking of natural hair. Uh, Greg uh, just talked about the um, Bob Marley yes. movie that opened yeah, yesterday. Yeah. Well, Bob Marley in the late 70s, you know, reggae was on the radar and, you know, locks, and that is the politically correct term, right. okay? Locks uh, became all the rage. They're still popular. Mm -hmm. Lenny Kravitz knows how to rock them. Uh, you, uh, you know, I you think could it's rock an, anything, but I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, but <laughs> and, and Zendaya, yeah. you know, is another one. Zoe Kravitz. Zoe Kravitz. It, it, a version it, of Locks. Yeah. Exactly. Whoopi Goldberg. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it it just has continued to be popular for decades. All right. All right. And finally. Um, so finally, in 1980, and this is. Um, this album by Grace Jones Ooh. changed everything. So her hair was natural, but she decided to change her look. And she did this flat top with the fade side. Mm, Men and women 
did this for decades. And the fade, when you think about it, is still being interpreted in Absolutely. new ways. That's right. Remember when they just recently thought like Travis Kelsey were, created the fade or he like, did yeah. you see that article? It was a whole thing. I'm wow. sorry, I digress. Yeah. But obviously people have been getting fades yes. for a very, very long time. Well, and <laughs> Kiki Palmer just posted a, a photo of herself with this same hairstyle. I mean, look at that face. Like, well, the face card does not decline. Well, <laughs> Grace yeah, Jones was a supermodel before she was a performer. Yeah, it was gorgeous. It was but gorgeous. to your point, it, it, Travis, it, what's what's old is what's new, as the saying goes. And um, so if you feel like you want to get, you know, natural. Okay. Oh. Let me get some faux in for honor, the summer. In honor of... Um, Bob uh, Marley. Bob Marley, right? Maybe I'll get some faux locks for the summer. I I'll, think this is really I cool. I think it's cute. So when it comes to hairstyles, John, do mm. you feel like they always make a comeback? I think that they make a comeback, um, but oftentimes they're altered in a way that makes them new. And I think that's the I think that's the key to reinventing something. Yeah, a little new, fresh, relevant for the yeah. time. Yeah. Yep, right. exactly. Well, next on Live in the D, we're talking um, about smooth skin, how shedding some layers could help you feel fresh and clean, plus what you'll need to know after exfoliating. Well, welcome back to this special style edition of Live in the D. Now, we're heading into sandal season, mm -hmm. right? So it's the perfect time to reset our skincare. Mm -hmm. And exfoliating is key and can make a huge difference, not only just how your skin looks, mm -hmm. but how it feels. I shared some exfoliating advice with Tati and Rob Stone from the Rob and Holly Show on 99.5 WYCD. Take a look. First, what does exfoliation actually accomplish? Okay, it, everybody needs to do it because when you think about skin care and all of these involved, you know, potions and lotions, especially that our, susceptible, our teens are susceptible now to, uh, it, it doesn't matter what you do to take care of your skin if you don't do the first step, which is exfoliation. It removes all the dead skin cells. It stimulates new cell growth. Mm. I don't know if you caught the show earlier in the week where I mentioned that uh, my wife had to convince me to wash my face at night before I went to bed, so I'm, we're, I'm very behind, and you would be very disappointed in me for this. So I need your help. Uh, the I'm, look of I'm judgment. older, bigger, meaner, <laughs> so you gotta do what I tell you now. Okay. All, right. All right. So, that, <laughs> what ingredients should we be looking for? I'm so scared for you. You have no idea. All right, Rob. <laughs> Let's look at these ingredients. Okay. We've got a, a little sign here that, that also indicates things that you want to look for, okay? If it says acid, pretty much you can figure out whether it's lactic acid, whether it's citric acid. Um, those those kinds of ingredients will help exfoliate, you okay. know, just without a lot of mechanical, you know, effort. Uh, things like retinol, okay? So those are things that everybody can use in small enough doses, okay? okay. Uh, the next thing, though, mm -hmm. tools. And these are the tools. We have right all here. kinds of fun tools. Tati, I was telling you that like the best thing, and you can see here, $2.99, okay? Dollar store. These are exfoliating mitts. Head to toe, you will feel like a new person. How, how long Scrub should down. my skincare routine take at <laughs> night? And in the, is it at night in the morning? How yeah. long does this normally take? Yeah, well, uh, just a couple minutes. Okay. Mine is a different story, but there's there are you know like blow torches and electrification and sandblasting involved. Yeah. But right, so something simple like this. Okay. Look at this. Okay, this is like for guys. This is like just this for your, your body to like out. you know in the shower. I love yeah. these. This is a synthetic form of mm -hmm. lupa. Uh, look at this little gadget. Yeah, here. let's you hold it up so you can see it. This is for your feet. Yeah, so a shot of that. pumice, scrub brush, and two different files. Of course, one, and this, if you, you're an you. athlete, Rob, this it's for your feet, feet it, you'll feel like a new person. Okay, so let's talk about the natural remedies. Okay, 
Scrubs, you can buy a scrub that mm -hmm. has salt in it and all kinds of other good things. You can make a scrub out of things like oatmeal, coffee, sugar. That's the basis, you know, for your exfoliating scrub. And then you can add things like, remember when we talked about citric acid? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oranges, lemons, that's citric acid in the old times, you know, yeah. women used to use lemons for their elbows. elbows okay. Right. But you can combine honey, oatmeal, uh, citric acid. It, you know, you can be creative with it depending on what your skin needs. All right. You can DIY it, get something physical, get some acids. We like all of them. Yep. Yep. Thank you, John. So what are your plans for this weekend, Rob? <laughs> I'm going to be exfoliating all weekend long. You darn yeah. right. Yeah. All right. Okay, this is important. We want to point out that thorough exfoliation can leave your skin sensitive. So you'll want to follow up by making sure that, um, you know, you're soothing your skin. Because when you think about it, exfoliating your skin is actually damaging it a little bit in order to create new growth of skin cells, right? Okay, that's something really okay. that we need to know. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, mm -hmm. We talked about in the piece using retinol, which actually is a skincare ingredient that will exfoliate your skin. But once you've achieved that, you don't want to use this. You want to use something that is soothing, maybe uh, uh, you know something like a, a mild moisturizer. You could look for on the label um, a word like sensitive, even. Um, Skincare that's for diabetics okay. tends to be a lot more uh, full of emollients and sometimes more gentle. So we want to think about uh, soothing the skin. It could be natural ingredients like coconut oil, aloe vera. I'm a big fan of arnica gel. It's like you're treating a mild sunburn, okay, right? So that's a good way to think of it. Nourishing our skin after exfoliating. So once you exfoliate, relax, right? Yes, you damage and then pamper. Damage and pamper, okay. Sounds like a toxic relationship, but okay. <laughs> I, it works, it's anything for beauty, <laughs> anything for beauty. Keeps it interesting too. <laughs> yeah. All right, well coming up on Live with the D, the story behind this magazine cover, it's historical impact and how a Detroiter is involved. Well, as we talk about style today, we want to highlight some firsts in the industry, specifically black models. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the story of five firsts in history that I shared with Tati and Jason Magic. Well, let's start with Beverly Johnson. She's just a classic beauty. Yeah, so speaking of firsts, and we will focus on the lovely Beverly Johnson here. She still looks like that, actually. Mm. Um, she's readily acknowledged, often acknowledged, as the first African-American model to be on the cover of Vogue. But she wasn't. Oh. There uh, was another model who actually is from Detroit. And her name is Danielle Luna. Okay. She was a cast tech graduate. She kind of reinvented herself. There's an amazing, amazing HBO documentary about her, Danielle Luna, supermodel. She broke through all kinds of barriers. She was, she reinvented herself. She was, um, uh, she had a, a way of speaking and her own kind of accent. And a way to describe her was she was like an interplanetary beauty. Wow. People even kind of referred to her as alien-like, but so beautiful. So beautiful she was out of this world. So she was the first African-American model to be on Vogue. It was British Vogue, though. And this was 1966, so it was six years, seven years before Beverly Johnson was on the cover of American oh, Vogue. Detroit history there, along Z with a correction. Yes, and it's a fascinating documentary. Okay, now what can you tell us about Iman, besides the fact that she's married, she, she married another fashion icon? Yes, well, okay, Iman, I kind of feel like Doniel Luna with that exotic beauty blazed the trail somewhat for Iman. Uh, Iman 
was married to David Bowie for a long time. Uh, and actually, her first husband was Spencer Haywood, uh, mm. the basketball great who played in Detroit here. How about that? Uh, yeah, at Pershing That's pretty awesome. Uh, Iman was another exotic beauty who broke all kinds of barriers. And she also started a cosmetic company that spoke to women of color. Uh, for so many, you know, decades, it was all about like, well, you're either light beige, medium beige, or dark beige. And we know that's not the case. So Iman built a global cosmetic empire. Yeah, there was that whole ashy era where you see all of these old stars where you're like, their makeup was just a little bit off. Yeah. So yeah, that was a time. So you also wanted to talk about Veronica Webb? So Veronica Webb, my close personal friend, your close personal friend, remember when she was on the she show here the show. for she a was whole hour with shockingly us? Shockingly beautiful. Yes. Uh, so Veronica Webb made history because she was the first African-American model to sign a major contract with a cosmetics company and be, you you know, their face, their spokesperson. And that company happened to be Revlon, which is like a huge global conglomerate. Right. Yeah, so. Stunning. She's shocked. That was she, she major. Was so beautiful. She was shocking. When I saw her in person, it's like, yeah, she almost doesn't look real. So I get it. Mm -hmm. All right, so finally, yeah. male supermodels. Yeah. So. Who's the groundbreaker here? Tyson Beckford, and you know, like, <laughs> there aren't that many male supermodels. Right. It's like if you ask people on the street, name a, you know, a male supermodel. They can't. Well, and but I think Tyson Beckford's name would be probably first on the list. He is known as the contract king because everybody wanted Tyson Beckford to front their brand, most notably Ralph Lauren, uh, which coincidentally I happen to be wearing <laughs> today. But he, that was a major contract. It was like the biggest contract in history for a male model. He was being paid the same amount of money that like Naomi and Christie and, uh, you know, uh, Cindy, those supermodels of the air were, were being paid. And so he's known as the contract king and that Ralph Lauren contract made him the highest paid male model in the world. Interesting. Wow. Now, isn't modeling the one area where women actually get paid more than men? Absolutely. Yeah. So. I, I, it may be the only one. It may one. be the only one. And Tyson, hey, he broke through. Yeah, that hey. Tyson, I'll tell you. He's easy on the eyes. Well, I when I grow up, about. I want to look like Tyson. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, John, this is incredible history like you always bring us. Well, fashion history is history. That's right. If you like fashion, then you need to know fashion history. If you like history, then you should know fashion history. That's right. It's incredible that a Detroiter was part of all of this, wouldn't you say? Yep, and Doña Luna again, I cannot emphasize how interesting and groundbreaking she was. Yeah, it's a name we should all know. Yep. Well, next on Live in the D, we're going through some of the 2024 style trends for men. So will these trends actually catch on? See what you think when we come back. It's time to talk trends in menswear for 2024. From the groundbreaking and outrageous, okay, to the return of bland and boring, but the bland and boring has a little bit of a different spin to it. The big question being, what are men willing to wear? Yeah, that is the question. Well, now, John shows some trends to Detroit Lions legend Lomas Brown and me to see what we think. Now, check this out to see if you want to say hello or goodbye to the trends. So, you know, there's this thing happening in professional sports now, Lomas, mm -hmm. where it's called the tunnel walk. And designers are clamoring, you know, to dress professional athletes oh. as they're photographed going uh, to oh, and from wow. the locker room. All right. And, you know, it's like a big deal. It goes social, you know, viral yeah. on social media. So I thought, speaking of games, right. uh, huh? we're going to play a game. And this is all about menswear trends. So if we like a trend, we would put it on your back. Okay. If okay. we don't like a trend, mm. leave it on the rack. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. So let's I'm get into the you. first yeah. trend. Um, we're going to talk about something that we would normally think about for warm weather, but you say no. Sleeveless, uh, as is evidenced by my scrawny 
body next to <laughs> Lomas. Thank you very much for this You're kind so of so hilarious. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so sleeveless, yeah. but it's it is now being interpreted for fall and winter. Okay. Um, you know, and we could do things like you know do it. sweater vests. Ooh, um, okay. you, a, a, any guy can go into their closet. You just have to be comfortable. And you got to be the right guy to do you it. You got to so, be the right guy. Yeah. So, so what do you what say? You could do oh, this. Yeah. yeah. Would All you do day it? Long. Let, Sweater vest. Let the guns. That's right. right. The, the guns. And gun the show. Okay. There you go. Right Get there. the gun oh, show. Yeah. So I, you're gonna say. Mm. Yeah, I'll say yeah. yeah. I, yeah. For myself. <laughs> no. No. You uh, uh, can't have fun with it. So you have another trend that's another. Elevation, literally. Yes. Talk to us about that. Cropped tops, some more skin, you know, for mm. men. Uh, it, you know, it's the the bottom hem is cut hmm. high, I have right? Opinions. But the way that you elevate it, literally, mm -hmm. is instead of it being like a cutoff uh, sports jersey, you would have maybe a sweater or a top that has an actual cropped. Short and hem. are they showing midriff? Is that what's happening? Well, and then you wear it to your point, Tati. You wear it with high waisted, mm. preferably pleated pants. Okay. Mm. Is there midriff drift being shown? Well, you could <laughs> if you're needy, <laughs> uh, or if you have, or if you, you know what, if you have great abs. See, All right, go. I'm gonna say leave it on the rack because put some clothes on and behave yourself, okay. men, because you know it's gonna be the Thank eight you. pack guys out there. Thank you. I don't have a six pack, a twelve pack. I don't have any of that, so okay. leave it on the rack. Okay, okay. so let's get through these yeah, yeah, because yeah. we're we're running out of time. Yep. Now you say that there's a new way for guys to make a statement. <sighs> Any guy can do this. Okay. Look at mm. what I've got here. The statement belt, okay? It could be about color. It could be about the cut. You know, this is kind of an interesting cut. It could be about several laps, yeah. so to speak. It could be about embellishment. Little studs. Mm. Okay? Yeah, Put it on that. your back. I like there that. Yep. I Any like guy that. can do it. Yeah. All right. So finally, let's talk about beanies and hats before yep. we run out of time. What do you say? Okay. Beanies year round. Marvin Gaye used to rock a beanie, remember? Well, you gotta look yes, good like yes, Marvin Gaye to wear, you know? <laughs> <laughs> listen. But if you listen. can do it like Marvin, right? Yeah. And the trend for baseball hats is to wear it literally, whoops, to literally wear them backwards. Oh, okay. So remember when everybody was, cool. was doing that? Mm -hmm. Again, you know, you'd have to elevate it. Maybe you wear it with like a blazer, and you know, so you don't okay. you don't make it look like you're going, okay. you know, uh, someplace casual. All right. So I'm gonna yeah. say, put it on your back. Yeah, I am. Totally okay. These are good. We I like these. That. All right. We I like all of these, John. The last yeah. trend: oh. big boy bangs. Okay. Ooh. So Wait. this is like bangs. We have a we have a graphic here. Yeah. Um, bangs for guys, all right. And some of this has been attributed to the K-pop mm -hmm. influence, but <laughs> Cab Calloway actually did it better than anybody. Yeah. And Lomas, I could actually make some bangs for you if you'd like. <laughs> it's an option. Tati, can I borrow your yeah. sign too? Yeah. Okay. John, you are the absolute best. He made me some bangs. They look good on me, but I don't think John, I don't think Lomas is going for it, John. Okay, John, so things are always changing, but stepping away from trends, what would you say is the most timeless fashion piece for men? Okay, I, I actually think that a blazer uh, is something that every guy should have. It's it's inner wear, it's outer wear, it dresses you up, it gives you respect, it, it, you know, it's something that everybody should own, but a well-tailored one. And it doesn't have to be, in a, it doesn't have to be expensive. Okay, now what about for women? Because come on ladies, we want to know what we need too. Well, the, I think the same thing could be said for women, but, um, you know, a, a, a great dress that is um, the right, shape and silhouette. Case in point, Anna Wintour, editor-in-chief at Vogue, she wears the same style dress every single day because it works. We'll go with what works. Mm -hmm. That's right. Next on Live in the D, how to check out the new hairstyle you're considering before you make the commitment.
Now, changing up your hairstyle is exciting, but let's be real. It can also be very intimidating. Have you ever wanted to try a new hairstyle, but you were afraid of the commitment? Of course, I'm part of this crew. <laughs> well, <laughs> you don't have to be afraid, uh, you know, of making the total commitment. Um, it, that just doesn't have to be the case. Mm -hmm. You can, in fact, try styles on before. It's not a virtual thing, right. okay? Here's a look back at my talk with Tati and April and Jody Treatweiler. And we had a good time a and it, time. there was a lot of enthusiasm for this. <laughs> it was, <laughs> right? It, there was. I've screwed up my hair. We all um, have. You know yes, who's really have. smart though? April Morton. Okay. Sounds like that. Well, there's a okay. lot of new hair technology out there, and that's why April's here. So mm -hmm. tell us what's going on. Yeah. All right. So. Well, so you had this brilliant idea because before you <laughs> cut your hair, you. I decided, so okay, just, just, just for um, for the story purposes. Mm -hmm. So last week I came in with my haircut, of course. John's like, oh, I love your hair. And I said, well, thank you, but I cheated a little bit. I didn't actually cut my hair. Mm -hmm. So what I did was get uh, a weave, a sew-in weave, and then I had that cut. So there, for my hair is braided up, uh -huh. and it's still long. Uh -huh. But I decided I wanted to try it out, but I wasn't ready. <laughs> April, I'm like, how smart and is for that? You've n so Look at Jody. This is the thing that's kind of normal to black people. Like, let's just yeah, play yeah, it yeah, out yeah, there, yeah. so it's okay. not awkward. Yes, yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's a unusual. thing. It's a thing, yes, it's the it is. smartest oh. thing, because you're also protecting, protecting. your hair, yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So it's like you get the look without actually going Doing Exactly. There. You can even color your hair and see, do you like that red? before you go and, you know, pop, and, potentially and, you damage know, your hair. See if it's going to damage your hair, exactly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So, John, there is a lot of new technology that is mm -hmm. out there. Tell us about some of it. Well, okay, so, you know, you can, to the point of color, mm -hmm. there are all of these temporary color things yes. that you can do, all right? Mm -hmm. Like colored paste or all of these sprays. You can spray highlights in. There are also hair pieces. I read baby bangs are coming back. Oh and my look gosh, at the cut those are super baby. Right. Yeah, and I'm like, not how, sure how bad does Jody look? Oh, and, I mean, no, she's no. not even. No, it's, no. It, it's, it's not, so it, you know, you, it's hard to make you look bad, oh, but but, still. Yeah. but the point is these so little. this is in? Yes, but oh, not, wow. not do I don't think, you know, for well, everybody. Um, yeah, I think this certain, I've seen these on certain people, and they can look one. good on some people, but Much it has better. to go with your whole mm -hmm. haircut and your whole style. <laughs> because, I, you know, some people do the little short, short ones, and it works on their face. What about? Oh, for you, Tati. Mm -hmm. Tati. Let's see. Uh -huh. Wait a minute. Oh, you look cute in You look like a teenager. Oh, okay. You look like a teenager. Oh, Seriously. Wait, I'm kind of feeling you this. At yes. first, I'm like, what is... No, you look cute. Oh, look cute. at that. Well, so, I like it. Cute. See, this is, this is an example of shake how it, you shake can it, try the look. Shake the bank. I think we have, like, a, a photo of... <laughs> I think we have a photo of like all of the Hold bad on. hair, good and bad hair sales that I have tried over the, oh, de bad, over the really? decades. Oh, I need to see That's this. Good. And so it's like oh, some of it's good, some of it's bad, short, but it went with ponytail, the time. You know, it went with the time. Well, you know, the perm was not a good move. John, you are always fine. <laughs> but, I'm sorry, yeah, he's exactly. like trying to look just handsome. There but, is no So we were talking that. about like color too. Look right. at we, we have another image. This is my friend Mark. You know my mm -hmm. friend Mark, mm -hmm. he is a committed brunette, Ooh. but we tried oh, just hello. temporary silver streaks just so that he could go there and see yeah. what his future that might look like. You know what, that looks, it does look good. So it what if we really wanted good. to consider a change of color with a strip of hair? Are you saying to That's spray it he, in or you it, use a piece? What you it, can do anything. You can do, you can use, you know, the temporary sprays. Yeah. You can use a, these were $2.99 and you can just What's cut this? it. You know, yeah. this was five ninety nine. Wow. Okay. Oh, I mean, so, color, oh, everything is matching. Right I, I love it. I had bangs when yeah. I was younger. Yeah. I was a kid, I should say, and I might. I don't know. Oh, what was that? Yeah. The other thing too Sassy is that okay. there are apps out there yeah. where you can import a photo of yourself. They're really yeah. sophisticated, wow. and you can try hairstyles on yes. virtually, and it's for men and for women, you can try facial hair. And what's really buzzing right now is, literally buzzing, yeah. is Harry Styles hair. He <laughs> buzzed all that beautiful oh. hair off, and oh. it's just, you know, everybody's talking about it. Okay. Wow. So wow. I, I photoshopped <laughs> it. 
<laughs> that's what I would look like that's if cute. I lost my that's hair. Handsome. You can't go wrong, Jen. You, you can't. You're just mm -mm. handsome. Oh, yes. I can't go wrong. Just fine. No, you can't. Just look at that. Secrets. But, I have extensions in, so this light hair. Yeah. That's yeah. not my hair because my hair is so dark that my stylist said it's going to damage your hair. Let's put extensions in for and the you're light pieces. You're protecting your hair. I did not like, know that, Jody. See? No, it's it's like a weave. Oh, wow. I'm so shocked when she's... Well, because I can't There's a different my... oh. wear. So yours well, isn't braided. But it, it's a weft. It's... Like, feel. You can feel on the back of my head. Oh. We're just spilling okay. tea around yeah, here. I, We're I, just sharing I, all this. Okay. It's like... <laughs> okay. Style it's hacks gorgeous. and, yes. and yes. confessions. I like style hacks and confessions. John, thank you so much. And the bangs are back, people. What do y'all think? They... I love bangs on you. I do, too. Now, okay. So, would you consider cutting your hair so that you have bangs. This is a great option, though. This is a great option. I mean, I would, if I had the guts to cut my hair, because you have to take a nice chunk of hair to get beautiful bangs like this. Mm -hmm. um, but this, why, when you could just do this? Well, I'm gonna start wearing bangs, y'all. Y'all better get ready, because John is gonna hook me up. I might start wearing bangs, too. Well, let's do it together. Yeah, I mean, how nuts <laughs> would I look, you know? You look great. I had, well, I had them when I was, like, you know, five years old. Kind yeah. of that John John Kennedy thing, you know, but... Got it. But not no, they just make you feel like a whole new woman. Yeah, and you can, have like a, you can have a whole selection. It's going them. down. Yeah. It's going down. Well, thank you so much for joining us for Live in the D. John, thank you so much. Thank you. This, this was been really awesome. special. It has been. We'll see you tomorrow at 11 a.m. Keep it right here for Local 4 News at Noon. Have a great day.